All right, again, my name is James. I am one of the video production specialists here at Video Guys. If you have any questions about anything that we're going over today, you can give us a call, 800-323-2325, and there's a pretty good chance that you'll talk to me. So, yeah. And speaking of how you can ask us questions, there's quite a few different ways that you can ask us questions. You can call us. You can go to our website and hold on, our slide deck isn't moving. Oh, there it is. Sorry about that. Um, you can go to our website. There's a chat bubble on our website. We have real people that are checking those every day. Um, it's not a bot. It's real people checking those. Um, you can send us an email to sales at videoguys.com. Uh, again, we are checking those every single day and answering them as quickly as we can. If you're watching live right now on Facebook or YouTube, you can comment down below or you can tweet at us or X at us or whatever it's called at video guys on Twitter or X. So anyway, let's get into the first question, which is a question that we get asked all the time and we have no problem at all answering this question every single time. So David on Facebook messaged us and asked, how do I choose the right Netgear switch? And that's a great question considering that uh, Netgear's Pro AV line has expanded uh, exponentially, especially in the past year or two. Um, so they have a whole bunch of different switches in the Pro AV line, starting out with the M4250 switches, the M4300 switches, and the M4350 switches. Now we've been saying for a long, long time that the M4250 Pro AV switches are our number one NDI tech support tip um, and solution to fixing um, NDI workflows. And that applies with the M4300 and M4350 switches as well. And we'll get into the differences between them a little bit. Uh, but first, how do you know which one's right for you? Well, the simple answer is you need to learn some of these terms and at the very least um, understand what your equipment that you're planning on using, how it's going to work with the switch and what requirements your equipment um, has for the switch. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to take into consideration is your the devices that you're using, uh, whether it's a camera or a controller or an NDI encoder or decoder, what is the power requirement? So POE stands for power over ethernet. And there's essentially three flavors of POE. There's POE, which is 15 watts, there's POE plus, which is 30 watts. And then there's POE plus plus, which ranges from 60 to 100 watts. So you're gonna have to make sure that you're looking at the, the, the specific devices uh, user manual to determine which, uh, how far in that is. I, I, I believe with the Netgear switches, the POE plus plus switches are 90 watts. So if you need something that has more than 90 watts, then you will still probably need to get a POE injector. But for the most part, cameras are typically POE plus, unless you're looking at the very high end uh, PTZ cameras, such as the Panasonic uh, UE 150s or 60s, or uh, the Canon CRN 700. Those are gonna be POE plus plus cameras. But for the most part, a standard PTZ camera is going to be POE plus. Um, when you're looking at NDI encoders and decoders, and also uh, PTZ controllers, for the most part, again, those are usually gonna be POE. So you've gotta look at the devices that you are planning on using, plus how much power they require. Now, when you're looking at that, you also need to look at the total power delivery, which is the amount of power that the switch can give out at a maximum output. Now, a, a switch, may have eight ports that are POE plus compatible, but only have a output of 110 watts um, of power. So it has a total power delivery of 110 watts. Now, a, a good example of why you would want to have a switch that has eight ports on it that can't have all eight ports be POE plus plus, or excuse me, POE plus is Say you have three cameras and a controller. Well, again, if you have three cameras that are typically POE plus at 30 watts, that would mean that you're using 90 watts for your cameras. And then maybe you have a single PTZ controller, 
Well, now you have uh, typically controller is going to be about 15 watts. So now you're at 105 watts. Well, what are you going to use the other ports for? Well, maybe you want to have um, a couple different computers connected to it to do your switching or previewing your screens. Um, maybe one of your cameras is going to be plugged into an outlet, so you don't need to have power provided by the switch. So there are plenty of different reasons as to why you might not necessarily want to get a switch that can power every port, but there's also plenty of reasons that you may want to have a little bit of overhead in both the number of ports that the switch has and the, um, the total available power, uh, because maybe down the road you'll want to add another camera without having to get another switch or a PLE injector or plugging it into the wall. So there really is a switch out there for every single workflow and we can help you find that. The other thing that you may want to look into is um, whether or not the switch has SFP ports or small form factor ports. Typically these F SFP ports are gonna be higher uh, transfer speeds. Um, they go up to like 100 gigabytes. Um, typically if you are going to be daisy chaining um, network switches together, you're gonna wanna go through an SFP port instead of your standard uh, CAT6 ethernet cable. The other reason that you might want to be using the SFP port is specifically, you know, we've been talking about Bird Dog a lot lately with their OG4 cards. And if you put those into an open gear rack, and now you have, you know, 10 of those in a rack, and you're bringing in, you know, upwards of, well, that would be like 40 cameras, 30, 40 cameras. Well, all of that data is not going to transfer over a standard uh, gigabyte Ethernet cable. So you're going to have to use an SFP port. Uh, to bring all of those onto your network. Now again, Netgear has the M4250 line, the M4300 line, and the M4350 line. Um, a lot of the, the things, a lot of the features between these switches are the same. They're all going to have the same user-friendly interface. They're all going to have the ability to have different profiles set to each port. They're all going to be... Um, compatible with the Engage software. So let's talk about some of the differences. So the M4250s are available in PoE, PoE Plus, and PoE++ Plus uh, uh, configurations. Um, they can have one gig and 10 gig um, ports on them. The, there is um, an internal power supply and there is no way to add more power. So when you have that switch, whatever power, whatever total power delivery it, it offers, that's what it offers. Uh, and then the, the, all of the ports are on the back of the unit. So when you plug it into your rack, all of your ports are going to be in the back of the unit. Now, when it comes to the M4300, those are all going to be PoE Plus uh, switches. There are 1 gig and 10 gig uh, options available. And then this is where you get modular PSUs, uh, power supplies. So you are able to choose how much total power it has based on the power supply unit that you want to put into the switch. The other difference is um, it's going to have the IT look, so all of the ports are going to be on the front of the switch, uh, which makes it a little bit easier to um, hot swap your, your cables or you know, devices. And then lastly, there's the M4350 line of switches, and this gives you the most, uh, you know, versatility when it comes to the switches. So you have PoE+, Plus, you have PoE, you have PoE++, Plus Plus. you have uh, ports that go all the way from 1 gig all the way up to 100 gigs. You have an internal power supply unit that comes with the switch, but then if you want to add more power, you have the option to do that with the modular power supply units. And then also, just like the M4300s, all of the ports are going to be on the front of the switch. Now, I know that we talked all about a lot of different um, terms and things like that with these Netgear switches. I'm going to tell you two things. You can give us a call at 800-323-2325, and we will help find the right switch for you. And if you want to get more information on this, I highly recommend checking out our show uh, from NDI November, um, where we had Laurent from Netgear go into the nitty gritty details of all of the differences between all of these, and then also doing a live demo explaining how to set uh, all the various uh, Pro AV protocols that you, uh, presets that you can have on these different ports. So definitely recommend checking that out as well. 
The next question is, we did a show a couple weeks ago about um, LiveView introducing the four modem kit and it's coming and do you need it? Do you not need it? What's the price? Give me all the information that you can. So first of all, I'm going to say, if you didn't know, LiveView did in fact uh, announced that sometime in the next couple of weeks, the four modem kits for the Live View Solos, uh, Solo Pros will be shipping. And I definitely recommend that you check out the video that we did last week or two weeks ago. But the short of it is just like we've been saying in the past, there's buying a Live View Solo is as easy as one, two, three. So step one, you're gonna purchase a Live View Solo. Uh, the four modem kit is only available with the Solo Pros um and that's okay there's still a difference between uh options you have the solo pro uh, hdmi model and you have the solo pro hdmi and sdi model the solo pros give you the added benefits of up to 4k 60 streaming hevc encoding they give you um usb c input uh, excuse me power and um of course supports the four modem kits now just to clarify 5G will be supported on the LiveView Solos. They are not yet. And the four modem kit that is coming will be a 4G kit. They will not be 5G modem. Step two is you're going to purchase the, uh, add the modems, either a two modem kit, or in this case, a four modem kit. Now the two modem kit just comes with the two modems because the LiveView Solo Pro comes with um, the USB cables. So when you get the modems, you don't need anything else. But when you go up to the four modem kit, you get the four modems, you get the Y cables to split your USB inputs, and then you also get the hip pouch, which is specifically designed to carry all of the modems and the LiveView Solo Pro on your hip with a nice clear um, plastic top so you can read uh, all of the information from the LiveView Solo Pro. Once you pick your modems, that's when you go and register your LiveView Solo Pro at uh, LiveView's website on their portal. And then depending on if you got the two modem kit or the four modem kit, here are the prices. So the price for the two modem kit is $450. Doesn't matter if you're using the base model LiveView Solo modems or the Solo Pro um, two modem connect kit. They're both $450 with the uh, USA plan being $295 a month and the Traveler plan being $520 a month. The Solo Pro Connect 4 modem kit bundle is $995, and then it's $435 a month for the data plan, uh, if you're gonna be in the United States, and then $750 a month for the Traveler's plan. Now, of course, since you have more modems, it does cost a little bit more. So. The question from the get-go was, do I need the four modem kit? And the simple answer is, if you're already using a LiveView Solo Pro and you're not experiencing any issues with your streams, no, you don't need a four modem kit. Where do I see the four modem kit coming into play? I see the four modem kit coming into play um, specifically in places that are going to be much more um, uh, rugged, mountain -ish. Uh, and specifically where I've been suggesting people consider it is cruise lines. Lots of people like to go on cruises and do vlogging and a whole bunch of stuff like that. And, you know, the cruise line Wi-Fi is unreliable, as everybody knows. But if you have four modems plus the, cru plus the cruise lines Wi-Fi, you have five IP connections, your stream is going to go out. So definitely not for everybody, but for those people that are going to be in those remote areas, Definitely stay tuned for more information on the four modem kit and when we have them in stock, we will let you know. The next question is, should I live stream with software or should I get a turnkey uh, system, production system? Now, when we say software, we're, we're primarily talking about things like uh, OBS, vMix, or Wirecast op, uh, running on a computer. Um, a turnkey production system is also going to use software. Um, so when we say software, we mean build your own computer and then run software versus uh, purchasing a pre-made system that is already uh, built. 
Now, there are pros and cons to, to both, so let's talk about some of the differences. So there are a bunch of advantages of using a production system. The first one being flexibility. Um, you have the flexibility to build the computer however you want and then use whatever software you want to use. There are um, some free options like OBS. There's some paid options like vMix and Wirecast. Um, the next thing is cost effectiveness. Typically, it's going to be a little bit cheaper to build a computer from scratch than it is to purchase a, a, a turnkey production system. However, if you already have you know, a computer in that $2,000 range and you want to convert it, it may be a little bit harder because now you start having to add NIC ports for NDI or capture cards for your SDI or HDMI inputs. And if you want to have outputs, then it can get a little bit more complicated. Um, Multifunctionality. Obviously, if you're building your own computer, um, you can install other apps on it. Um, you know, Photoshop or Premiere or whatever nonlinear editor you want to use. Those are all options that you can do on a PC. I wouldn't recommend doing that. I would recommend having a dedicated system for your live streaming capabilities, but you could do that. And then portability, especially when it comes to vMix and Wirecast. Um, if you purchase the license, you can have that on multiple devices and be able to you know, transfer um, ownership to another device and you know, have multiple people on your team all sharing one license or something like that. Um, so you do have that portability as well. Now let's talk about some of the advantages of using a turnkey production system. And reliability and professional quality, in my opinion, kind of go hand in hand. Especially when you're looking at a system like the TriCaster um, or any of the TriCasters, they have been in the business for literally decades and they have made a name for themselves and have, you know, gotten that reliability behind that name um, and that professional quality because they've been in the business for so long. The other thing is ease of use. Um, when you're looking at a turnkey production system, and we'll stick with the TriCaster again, because they've been in the business so long, if you've already been using a TriCaster and you upgrade to a new TriCaster, it's going to be the same interface that you already know. So you don't have to learn anything or next time a major update comes out, it's all gonna be relatively the same interface. Whereas, you know, I use OBS at home sometimes and i'll be honest whenever there's a new update i gotta like search and find how to, how to do everything again um, integrated workflow is another big one like i said these things are pre-built to handle live streaming so they're going to have all of your hdmi ports on them or sdi ports on them they're going to have multiple nic ports so you can have your local network and your out open network connected at the same time and all of that, you don't have to worry about the headache of building that or having that uh, foresight to, um, to include that if, if, if you don't know what you're doing. And then, of course, with support, um, TriCaster has their ProTech plan and JVC has uh, support along with vMix and Epifan has their amazing customer service. So you're going to get support not only on the hardware, but also the software. Now... There isn't really a right or wrong answer when it comes to building your own system or getting a turnkey solution. Both are totally viable. And if you have any questions or need any guidance on picking the right TriCaster for you or the right Epifan system for you or giving you the system requirements and recommended specs for Wirecast, give us a call. We'll, we'll, we'll help figure that out for you and what's going to fit best in your workflow. And again, this is kind of just an overview of a whole bunch of different products. And we have done in-depth videos on all of our turnkey systems. We've done in-depth uh, in videos on Wirecast before. So definitely check out some of our previous videos on some of these systems. And then if you want even more clarification, just give us a call 800-323-2325. And we will be more than happy to explain the difference between X TriCaster and this vmix machine we got you covered the last question is and we've been getting this on pretty much all of our social media actually is what's the big news coming from nab and the short answer is a lot 
too much to talk about in one show. As a matter of fact, I think we're going to have so much content that both next Tuesday and the following Tuesday are mostly going to be dedicated to um, NAB recap videos. Gary is not hosting the show today because he is down in Vegas and he is at the NAB show floor. He's looking at all of the cool stuff, taking pictures of everything, getting demos of everything. And Gary will be back in studio next Tuesday and he will go over everything that he saw uh, at NAB. And we're just excited to talk about all of our manufacturers and everything that they have announced. Uh, I'm, I'm a little giddy myself for, for uh, a lot of these products. So definitely make sure that you are staying tuned next Tuesday. And hey, let's throw a plug in there every Tuesday at three o'clock. Anyway, that is our show for today. Video guys, ask the video guys. My name is James. I'm a video production specialist here at Video Guys. Please subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook. Spread the video around. Ask us questions. And uh, we'll see you next week. Peace. Video Guys is available Monday through Friday. Give us a call at 1-800-323-2325. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram to stay connected with all of our updates. And you can like us on Facebook. Keep an eye out for our live videos, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.